They say good things come in small packages, and with that in mind, I have an especially small package to show you today. This is the QB Nook 1M from MSI, a mini PC designed for use in tight spaces and when you want to keep things nice and discreet. That's more than enough innuendos for one intro, so let's find out if size really does matter. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to KitGuru. So the QB Nook 1M from MSI is a tiny computer and it carries the Nook branding, a line of very small form factor PCs designed and produced originally by Intel. Back in 2023, Intel announced that it would no longer be producing Nook computers and that Asus would be taking over, but the license was non-exclusive, Hence why here we have an MSI designed and developed Nook machine to look at. The QB1M comes in a variety of different specifications, all based around Intel Core 14th gen processors. Pricing starts at roughly £550, but given how many different SKUs there are, we'd be here all day if I went through all of them. Focusing on what we're looking at in specific today then, MSI sent me out a QB with a Core 7 150U CPU, 16 gig of DDR5 memory and a one terabyte SSD. Picking up this exact model will set you back roughly 770 pound. Let's run through the spec in a bit more detail. The processor is, as I mentioned, an Intel Core 7 150U Raptor Lake chip. It's got 10 cores in total, two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. On paper, the P cores run at a base clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz and are capable of boosting up to 5.4 gigahertz, while the E cores run a little slower at a base clock speed of 1.2 gigahertz and a maximum boost clock speed of four gigahertz. Base power usage is listed as 15 watts in Intel specs with a maximum turbo power usage figure of 55 watts. This model of QB comes with 16 gig of DDR5 memory running at 5200 mega transfers. Details online are pretty vague regarding exactly what memory is inside of the QB, but cracking the case open reveals that it's Samsung M425R1GB4BBO-CWMOL, because that's a nice and non-confusing name. And it's made up of two eight gigabyte modules. For storage, we have a Western Digital SN560 fourth gen NVMe M.2 SSD. And that's sitting underneath a pretty substantial heatsink. I was surprised by just how chunky this heatsink was when I first opened the QB up. The drive itself is okay. It's nothing amazing, but it will definitely be more than enough to cope with the work-based scenarios that the QB has been designed for. When testing it with Crystal Dismark, read speeds came in at around 4,974 megabytes per second, and write speeds were just shy of 3,486 megabytes per second. Again, not blazingly fast, but certainly no slouch either. The board that's holding and housing all of those components is obviously a custom job, as it has to be, because it's absolutely tiny to fit into this tiny little computer. Despite its small size, it's got some pretty decent I.O. to be fair. On the front, you've got a pair of USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a micro SD card reader, the power button, and then a drive activity light. Then on the rear, there's a kind of Noah's Ark style 2x2 thing going on. You've got another pair of USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a pair of Thunderbolt 4 ports, a pair of HDMI 2.1 ports, a pair of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, and then a single connector for the power. I bet that power port feels a bit lonely with everything else in pairs. Seeing dual network ports will look a bit overkill for anyone that's using a system like this just plugged in and on a desk, but it's very, very useful useful for redundancy when you stick mini PCs like this in hard to reach areas such as behind digital signage boards and stuff like that. It's a lot smoother having a backup connection to keep things up and running rather than have stuff go down in a business environment while you wait for an engineer to visit the site and fix stuff. Sitting underneath the SSD is a Wi-Fi 6E network card, meaning the QB will be speedy when you're connected wirelessly if the network you're connecting to supports it, of course. And then there's also support on board for Bluetooth 5.3. There's a spare M.2 2242 slot for adding additional storage if required as well. That's really nice to see in a computer that is this small. And talking about size, the QB Nook 1M 
is a really small PC. The case, which is made from post-consumer recycled plastic and it's produced using green energy sources in their factories according to the MSI marketing and material on the websites and stuff, that case measures just 13 centimeters square and is just five centimeters tall with a total case volume of just over 0.8 liters. It'll easily fit behind monitors, under desks, and it comes with a Visa mount adapter in the box, so you can mount it directly to a monitor or to a wall mount if you want to. Again, that's really useful for some retail and industrial type installations. The top section of the case is matte black plastic and is soft to the touch. It does sometimes pick up fingerprints, but it's nowhere near as bad as a glossy finish. I get the impression with this computer that aesthetics weren't very close to the top of the list of priorities when it was being designed. It's kind of, it's just a black box. The bottom is made from metal though, and it has some venting to help with heat, and there's a Kensington lock on the side for keeping it from getting nicked. There's a touch of MSI branding on the top, a small MSI logo in the bottom corner, along with a sticker showing that this product won a Red Dot Design Award this year. There's not much more to say about the design really. As I said, it's just a black box. Taking this little black box apart is very, very easy though, which is a plus point. The bottom of the case houses four captive screws, which when unfastened, allow the bottom to come away from the top and it gives really convenient access to the SSD, memory, the CMOS battery, the Wi-Fi card, and that extra M.2 slot that I mentioned. Upgrading that memory and the storage will be easy with the Cubinuc 1M, which is a big thing and it's a pretty huge benefit over other small computers like the Mac Mini, for example. And that's enough talking about the specs and the design then. Let's have a look at how this thing has performed during my tests and let's compare it to the previous mini PCs that I've reviewed on the channel in the past. As always, all I've done is update the operating system and the drivers prior to heading through these benchmarks. Let's kick things off as we always do then with multi-core performance throughout a 30 minute Cinebench R23 benchmark. The QB1M turned in a score of 6,957 points, putting it above the Core i5-1330 you found in the ECS Lever Z5 Plus mini PC that I looked at a while ago, but a long, long way behind the Ryzen 9 7940HS found in that Geekom A7 system. Performance core clock speeds during this test initially boost up to 3.1 GHz before dropping down to a sustained 2.8 GHz roughly, while the efficiency cores follow a similar pattern, albeit a bit more slowly. Initially they boost to around 2.1 GHz and then drop back to rough 1.9 GHz. Switching things over then to look at the single core performance flips the script on its head to what we just saw. The QB scored 1,850 points, again over a 30 minute sustained Cinebench R23 benchmark. This puts the MSI machine ahead of both the Geekom and the ECS offerings. It's a pretty strong result to be honest. Clock speeds during this single core workload were boosting up to 5.4 GHz on the P cores before dropping to a sustained speed of roughly 5 to 5.1 GHz. And then efficiency core clock speeds averaged around the 3.6 GHz mark when boosting, with them dropping occasionally to around 1.9 to 2.1 GHz. A 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark places the QB1M in the middle of the three mini PCs I've reviewed on the channel so far, coming in with a CPU score of 5,497 points and a GPU score of 1,502 points. Talking about memory then, and the memory found in the QB Nook is of a similar spec to that which can be found in the Geekom A7 in regards to capacity and speed at least, but the memory in the MSI machine did land itself a higher result when looking at read speeds, coming in at 69,377 megabytes per second. Write speeds were a fair bit lower though when you compare those two machines. Ada64 recorded a QB NUC 1M result of 62,025 megabytes per second. Now I do have to add that these results were recorded on the MSI machine with Ada64 reporting that virtualization was turned on, something which I usually turn off to get a more accurate result. I was unable to do that in this case though, as even though the settings were turned off in Windows, there is no BIOS setting that I could see to turn that off and the software was still reporting that virtualization was turned on. So that may have affected the result a little bit, but it won't have been anything like the difference we saw between those write speeds. And for the final synthetic benchmark then, we have PCMark 10. 
This is a kind of complete suite of tests that runs through a series of different scenarios and workloads related to general day-to-day -day computing and work stuff, like spreadsheet work, like photo editing and opening and closing st software, stuff like that. The QB NUC 1M landed a pretty respectable result, beating the ECS Lever Z5 Plus in all departments, but then falling short to the Geekom A7 across the board. So a kind of middle of the road sort of result, but this machine can easily handle day-to-day -day stuff. So let's talk more about that then. Actually using the computer for light work stuff is fine. And the real world experience that I've had using this machine very much reflects those PC mark results. It'll handle spreadsheets, web browsing and media consumption just fine as you would expect it to, to be honest. I tested Premiere Pro performance with a relatively simple project, some video footage that I had lying around with a bit of color correction on, on an adjustment layer. I added some text in, duplicated a clip on the timeline and it handled it really well to be fair, better than I expected it to. Timeline scrubbing was pretty good and render times on a short segment a 4K video didn't seem too crazy. Overall, I was pretty impressed with how this tiny PC handled the bit of light video editing that I tested it with. So let's talk a little bit about gaming then. And this is, I'll say this before we start, this is in no way, shape or any form at all a gaming machine. But I had to give it a go because you know, it can do it, so why not? I played Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with all settings on their absolute lowest, and that yielded FPS of somewhere between 40 to 60. But I've got to be honest, it didn't look or feel great at all. Control inputs felt slow and clunky, and the visuals were pretty bad with the game set up like this. But it did work, and it was kind of playable. I definitely wouldn't try to run anything more demanding than this on the QB1M though. As a world leading manufacturer, CyberPower PC UK expertly builds each PC with the largest range of parts available in the UK. We handle all your packages with care and ship them directly to you on next day delivery. Visit cyberpowersystem.co.uk. So the last few charts before we wrap up the video, let's talk power, heat and noise. The Core 7 150U found in the QB ran at a very conservative 8 watts when idle, which puts it higher up on the chart than both of the competitors that I'm using for comparison data. CPU power usage when running through a multi-core benchmark was 20 watts, the same as the Intel CPU found in the ECS Lever Z5 Plus, and 25 watts lower than the 45 watts used by the Ryzen 7940HS. Processor temperature was not far from being the same as the Intel Core i5 found in that ECS Lever Z5 Plus, the Core 7 150U found in the QB NUC 1M idled at around 57 degrees and reached a peak temperature of 78 degrees when running a Cinebench multi-core benchmark. System noise is roughly the same between all three of the mini PCs that I've reviewed on the channel so far. They're all pretty much silent when idle. The noise floor in my recording space is around 32 decibels. When you put a bit of strain on the MSI machine, the noise meter did read 37 decibels. The fan is noticeable, but I wouldn't call it loud by any means. You can have a listen for yourself now in these few clips. So to draw my conclusions then, I'm gonna do a bit of a comparison between the three mini PCs that I've reviewed in the past. Starting with the pricing, the MSI QB NUC 1M in this configuration that we've looked at today with that Core 7 CPU, 16 gig of DDR5 memory and a one terabyte SSD costs roughly 770 pound. The Geekom A7, which features a Ryzen 9 7940 HS CPU, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory and a two terabyte SSD is currently available for 750 pound. Then the ECS Lever Z5 Plus, which contains a Core i5-1335U processor, 16 gig of DDR4 memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. That one was set to release for $500 back when I reviewed it. I couldn't find it online to give you a current price, but that's a rough ballpark of what it costs. So while the QB NUC 1M did perform okay throughout my benchmarks, it's not the cheapest when compared to the competition. Specifically that Geekom A7 with its higher multi-core performance and twice as much memory and storage. Single core performance on the QB is a highlight though, with the Core 7 150U outperforming that Ryzen chip in Cinebench when I tested it. 
IO is another pleasing aspect of the QB. Dual wired networking alongside fast Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 leave little to be desired when it comes to networking and wireless connectivity. There are plenty of USB ports on offer and the combination of dual HDMI and dual Thunderbolt ports will definitely have you covered when it comes to connecting up displays. Up to four are supported at 4K 60Hz. Gaming is pretty much a no-go. For me anyway, being spoiled by the luxury of having a dedicated gaming PC, but it's not totally out of the question. For anyone who's desperate to boot up some lesser demanding titles, then you could do that on this, I suppose, but that's not what it's designed for. Overall, the QB Nook 1M may not be the fastest mini PC I've seen, but it's efficient, quiet, and it will easily handle day-to-day -day work and computing. And upgradability is, I guess, the icing on the slightly disappointing cake, Changing the memory or adding more storage will be easy and hassle-free if you ever decide to do it down the line. The only downside really is the price. Other than that, I feel it's a decent little PC. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video, you'll find links to our merch store. And then in the description, there'll be links to our Discord server, our Patreon page, and our website if you want to check any of those out. Anyway guys, I've been Matt. That on the desk behind me has been the QB Nook 1M from MSI, a tiny little computer. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later. <laughs>